Hello friends, welcome back to this video on analog communication. In this video, I am going to talk about the quadrature amplitude modulation. So we will begin with the generation of QAM signal. After that, we will see the detection of QAM with the mathematical analysis. And after that, we will see how it is different from OFTM. So first, we will see the generation. So now we have a serial to parallel converter. So if I have two signals, serial to parallel converter will give me two outputs which are connected to the digital to analog converter. So I hope you can generate these signals. These you have already studied in the digital electronics. So So from here I am getting X1T and from here I am getting X2T. So which is supplied to the product modulator and here I am multiplying it with AC cos omega CT. So with the help of an oscillator I am generating it and here I am passing it through a 90 degree phase shift and here I am multiplying it with AC sin omega ct because the 90 degree phase shift of ac cos omega ct is ac sin omega ct so now i'll get the output so output is the, is the summation of x1t ac cos omega ct so here i'll get here i'm getting x1t ac cos omega ct and here i'm getting x2t ac sin omega c t so what is the output it's the adder so output would be x1 t ac cos omega c t plus x2 t ac sin omega c t so now what i have done i have used the same frequency to send two signals so this would be my frequency efficient output so here i'll get the efficient output so now in the same frequency band i can send two signals so now talking about the detection so now in the detection this is called my empty so the output would be empty here so now in the detection the input would be my empty so this output is going to the detection input so here it's a synchronous detector again i'll be having two product modulators and this is multiplied by cos omega ct so here i am getting empty here also i am getting empty so from the oscillator i can generate cos omega ct and after 90 degree phase shift I will get sin omega ct. So after that what we can do? We can pass it through the low pass filter. And here also we can pass it to the low pass filter. And from here we will get x1 t's estimate. And from here we will get x2 t's estimate. So let's understand how this is happening. Now I have empty. So let's take the estimate of x1 t. So now when I have MT, it is multiplied by cos omega CT. So let's take this output to be M1T. So M1T would be M1T would be MT into cos omega CT. So MT is this. So if I multiply cos omega CT to this, so here I'll get X1T AC cos square omega CT plus X2T ac sin omega ct into cos omega ct so this is my m1t so i i can represent it like i know the well the formula of cos square omega ct so i can represent it as x1t into ac by 2 1 plus cos 2 omega ct i know the formula of cos square omega ct which is 1 plus cos 2 omega ct by 2 plus x2t by 2 into ac into 2 sin omega ct cos omega ct so what i did i just multiplied and divided by 2 here so this forms the formula of 2 sin theta sin 2 theta so here i am left out with x1t 
ए सी बाय टू प्लस एक्स वन टी ए सी बाय टू कॉस टू ओमेगा सी टी प्लस एक्स टू टी ए सी बाय टू हेयर दिस इज साइन टू ओमेगा सी टी सो नाउ दिस इज पास थ्रू द लो पास फिल्टर सो हेयर दिस विल rejected through the low pass filter because it's a high frequency signal similarly this is a high frequency signal so i'll get estimate of xt as x1t ac upon 2 so now this is the estimate of xt why it is called estimate of xt because it's the same form of xt is just the amplified or attenuated version so ac by 2 is a constant it's the attenuated or amplified version it's represent the same frequency spectrum as xt so i can easily generate x1t by normalizing it so now similarly if i talk about x2 dash t and if i am calling this to be m2t so m2t would be mt into sin omega ct so i am directly representing it so it would be x1t ac cos omega ct sin omega ct plus x2t ac sin square omega ct so now similarly i can find out the m2t so similarly i can say this would be forming two sin a cos b and here i can use the formula of sin square omega ct which is 1 minus cos 2 omega ct upon 2 so now m2t again i can reject all the higher frequency values it would be equal to x2t into ac by 2 so you can easily simplify it so now we will see how we can classify the 16 qam data so this gives you the graphical representation so this is the graphical representation of 16 qam so now what happens in the graphical representation this is my one symbol this is second symbol so here i am drawing symbols so now here i have 16 symbols which are representing my qam so let's suppose this symbol is 1111 so here because of 16 symbols one symbol will have four bits so now one symbol is represented by four bits and the two bits are representing my first message signal x1t and the next two bits are representing my next message signal so now here with the help of 16 qam i can send two bits simultaneously per signal and i can send two signals simultaneously so now here it's a combination of amplitude modulation plus phase modulation let's understand how so this these are my distances of each the each of the points from the origin so if i take the distances so these arrows represents the distance so this is my distance 1 this is my distance 2 this is also equal to distance 2 and if i talk about the short symbol so it represents the distance 3 so now here i have three distances d1 d2 and d3 which are phased at different phase angles so now here i have different uh, distances as well as different angles of each distance so it's the combination of amplitude modulation plus phase modulation so now if i have 64 qam how many bits per symbol would be sent so if i have 64 qam in 64 qam i'll be sending 8 bits per symbol so now this is the advantage of qam so if i talk about the advantage so the first advantage is more bits per symbol can be sent now if i am sending more bits per symbol it will increase the data rate so the second advantage is bandwidth efficient as i already told you i am sending two signals x1t and as well as x2t over the sa same bandwidth so it is bandwidth efficient i am using the same bandwidth to send two signals 
in am i was using this same bandwidth to send one signal so here it is more bandwidth efficient so now talking about the limitations so the first and the foremost limitation of qam or 16 qam is that it is susceptible to noise next in the detection i told you we can have the coherent detection so the coherent detection is the only kind of detection and where we have to generate the exact 90 degree phase from cos omega ct to sin omega ct so only coherent detection is possible so now if there would be frequency error or phase error there would be errors introduced in the output signal so if this frequency is not exactly same to the frequency which was used in the carrier in the transmitter there would be errors in the output signal so this is the second so we are we have said that only coherent detection is possible so all of the Pro, uh, all of the problems which were associated with the coherent detector was also present in the detection of qam so now the third limitation is it is using the linear amplifiers which is which are having power wastage so these are power inefficient and we are wasting power with the linear amplifiers and only we can use the linear amplifiers with qam and amplifiers are required to detect and amplify the noise the noise when it, it is received to the receiver it is attenuated so it requires amplification now linear amplifiers are used which are power inefficient so now talking about the applications so the first application is terrestrial digital tv broadcasting terrestrial digital television broadcasting or i can say digital video broadcasting so these are the applications of qam so here i'll be concluding my discussion on qam i told you i'll be giving you the idea that how it is different from ofdm here also we are using two orthogonal carriers so cos and sin are orthogonal in nature but we are using them at the same frequency if i talk about ofdm if you remember so let's suppose this was my ofdm first carrier the second carrier would have peak at the null of the first carrier so here i had the null and this would be the second carrier so now you can see the peak is always at the null of the second carrier and it is using more bandwidth qam is more bandwidth efficient than ofdm so this was all about ofdm and the difference between ofdm and qam i hope you understood this if you want to know ofdm then i have a separate video and you can watch that video for more information on ofdm i hope you like this video if you like it share it with your friends subscribe to the channel and push the like button thank you